1,000 grams of wild bird seed with 600 grams of water in each bag. Fold them accordion style. Set them in there, three on the bottom, three on the top. Put the plate on top of those. And then we're gonna put them in the pressure steamer. Bring that to pressure, put it on 10 until the steam starts coming out of the top. Let that come out for five minutes. And then uh, we're gonna turn it down to about three and a half and that'll keep it between 15 and 17. That'll keep it rocking, uh, maybe even four, just depends. And we're gonna cook that for two and a half hours. And we'll have six bags of grain spawn by the time we're done with that. So let me go ahead and uh, show you this here. I'd put, I cut that and put tape around it, get a good couple big scoops. Usually I can get it in uh, one big scoop, but I pretty much just do two scoops and can get it into the bag. I made that myself and uh, yeah, just giving you all the first look at how we're using this <coughs> sterilizer from the All American. And uh, let's get rocking. All right, hopefully it stays on. While we're knocking this out, this is our temporary station until we get everything moved into the barn. But it's raining outside right now. I want to get everything in the shed in the rain. So we're going to put a halt on that. She's cooking. And I'll be able to knock some stuff out. Gosh. Big old scoop. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get our, I'm using the, I'm using the cake pan, which I used to weigh and put on top of the bags. Turn it on, make sure it's all teared out, zero grams. And then uh, we're gonna have a thousand grams of bird seed. I put tape on here so that I've been poking holes in my bag with it. So but watch out for that if you're, if you're cutting anything yourself. I cut it down and then put the duct tape on there. Oops. And over. So easy, easily fits a thousand grams in here, but it's okay if you end up taking two scoops. Oh, okay. The uh, jug's a little over full there, which is why I have the towel. Started spilling off. Ooh, don't want to spill too much. Throw off my weight there. generally to not spill I just kind of curl it and pour it towards my fingers but you got to watch your weight when you do that and it's so over full we're right at 1600 in the box that this thing came in I'm using it as a temporary table. It's working really well for this little process here. About 1,640. Fold it up and put it in there. Get this water off, get it real deep. I've been doing 1,000 grams of 600 water with this bird seed. It's been working pretty good. 1,000 grams of bird seed. And uh, 600 grams of water. Seems to be a pretty good ratio. I think it's mostly, it's mostly millet in there. So... get a different picture for this but uh that one holds a little over a gallon so it comes in handy I just 
just give it a little curl. Maybe use my thumb to keep it out of the way a bit and uh, get the pour in there. Yeah, you can see as soon as I get a little water out of it, it doesn't spill as bad. But I got a couple of over there that I've made with just pure black bird seed. Let me see how those turn out. I'm running King Oyster on some of those. Actually went a little over on the water there. We're gonna add a few more grams. Not a huge deal, but you know. I haven't had any issues with these sticking or nothing, but uh, I'm going to fold them to the end and to the outside. That's kind of how these are going to go. Bam, bam, bam. Fold like that. We'll get one more on the bottom there. And I, I cooked one with the insert and one without the insert. Didn't really notice a difference, but it was leaving a stain on the bottom, and I, I don't want to stain the bottom of the pan. A little bit of markings, you know. I hate that I spilled water as soon as I started the video. Like, oh, I knew it's going to be a little spilly, but damn. I assume I'll get better at uh, doing all this, especially after I move it out to the shed. Yeah, I didn't grab enough. I like to make sure there's just a little bit of visible water, you know. I don't want there to be too much water in my grain spawn bags. Even when I was making them in just the Instapot, I was putting 500 grams of water in there, or a little less. And it was really, it seemed like my bird seed was drying out. And it could be because of all the other grains in there, you know, the uh, you know, the fiber material of the, the seed. So, but I felt like 500 was too little, and uh, 600, 600 is about right. But I like to just make sure there's a little bit of visible water. I don't want there to be a whole bunch, but it's going to soak it up. What I've learned about mushrooms thus far in these past few months is that, you know, it's okay to experiment. I haven't had any issues burning or nothing like that. These bags. I got some water upstairs boiling too. So that way it'll help this go a little faster.
Boom. Yeah, see, it's right at 1600. That's a, the best bag I've filled out of these so far. Uh, but I, uh, show you a little closer up of what I think are the perfect bag. But a little off is fine. So there's just a little bit of water over this spot there. Just a teeny bit of water. Just above it, right? That's where I like to have it. No matter what the weight says. I like to be able to see a little bit of water. I feel like if I can't see that little bit of water, then there's not enough. And uh, it's going to have, have slow slow spawn time. Slow growth. I don't really want that. And I use warm water too, just so you know, I, I feel like it prevents the bag from possibly ripping. Because sometimes, no matter what bag I use, they feel a little brittle. These Amazon ones are definitely my favorite so far. And like I said, I haven't had any issues sticking. I did a couple videos before I showed you. It's a whole better shape once I get the other bag in there. One thing I haven't been doing is filling it all the way up to that etch line. Because there's an etch line in there, so that holds about two gallons. And uh, that makes it spray a lot of water out of the top. So it's a little too much water, I think. Two gallons is too much. So I've been putting a gallon in there. About a gallon, maybe a little over per of boiling water to get it going faster. Spill too much water, but also that's why I was overfilling this too. Is I would like I like to be able to get six bags out of one pitcher, but uh, hopefully I didn't spill too much there. Enough for one more. But I think I'm gonna have to go get some more. I spilled too much. I didn't put too much in a couple of the other bags. We shall see. Might have just enough to make six bags. slow growth when it's dry. Oysters and limes mains. Not in a jar though. The jar 200, 300 grams and 200 grams of water is looking great. See it's just a little dry. I'll show you for example. I lift that up and that's like with 500 grams, 550 with a thousand grams plus or minus. And it's just a little too dry for me. I want a little more water than that. Teeny splash, just another 50, 60 grams, less than 100 grams more water, you know, kind of makes a difference, so it's about as exact as I can get, but I like to be able to see that water, just a little bit. See that grain something that's really soaked up. I'm going to probably take nine in here, honestly. So we might just try to do nine today. So I did done six pretty easy. So I'm gonna go get another pitcher and we're gonna try to knock out nine bags. We'll see if we can squeeze nine in.
900. A little more burn seed because I gave it too much water. A couple hundred grams. Even though it says 1650, it still seems like it's a little bit much, right? You can see that water pulling on top there. Now we're about 1700 grams, another 50 grams changed to that a lot. And this is just me. This is just how I feel about it. I don't really think it's going to make that huge of a difference for some of these, but don't want it to create an oxygen free environment in there in between which is what too much moisture is going to do it will compress and we'll just push the oxygen out from between in between the grains and uh not let it grow and i think it's also possible that it will lead to further contamination but more for me it's all about the growth so you can fit nine in here but these are going to swell Drop nine of these bags in there. off this bag, order some rye berries, maybe switch over to rye grass. I am making sure to leave the middle open. Christine does go all the way through there as well.
1,020 grams. Oops. Over by 20, but that'll be fine. One put in there. Alright, the last of my things fall perfect. How about that? Let's do the first time you put nine of these in here. I don't want to put six in before. We're gonna do nine this time. Seventy-three, so we'll probably just put about five hundred grams, four hundred fifty grams. We'll bring some about twelve seventy-three. Yeah, look. get our boiling water put that in there and then we'll put that up all right so we just dumped our boiling water in there didn't really catch it on video pouring it in but we got enough in there to cover well over a good two inches over the element heating element in there we're gonna go ahead and take our big heavy barrel and place it in there and sure enough, valve protector on the side there so you can run your valve but you see the water's already steaming so this just helps it go faster 
This is gonna let the air come out so you don't blow it up. You know, put this bad boy on there. Pressure on it. Come on, you turn it and boom. A little too far to the right. Line it up. You'll see the arrow here and lines up with that. Has these little latches to lock in. I just make sure that's open because it's already starting to gather pressure. I go with the two across from each other. Everything's off right now. And I'm just putting these kind of like barely tight right now. So I get them all on. And plus I like to make sure they don't fall off because these wing nuts will screw all the way off. And uh, still keeping a towel on standby for when this happens. But uh We'll go through this whole process here. So now that we got all these on, we're gonna tighten them together. But I like to look first, because it's really easy for me to tighten them. More with my left hand, and it kind of goes this way on its own. Get in front of the camera here. Now I've got it lubed up with the factory lube that it came with and avocado oil. So I'm just curious about that. I had meant to use olive oil with it just because it's what I have on hand. I didn't have any Vaseline and uh, or any of the grease. So I knew that high heat oil would be fine. But if you're wondering, avocado oil works just fine when mixed with the factory grease on there. So. Looks pretty even. Check all these. All right, we got this open in the open position right now. Go ahead and uh, turn it on. Turn it all the way to 10 until steam starts coming out of there. Remove the scale, plug it in over there. We got our handy dandy towel on standby right here. In case it starts spittling, it should be pretty good though. Shouldn't be a lot of water coming out of there since you don't fill it all the way up to the line. If you have problems with water coming out of the side, it's because it's filled to that line. Now that's what the factory recommends. You stick with doing your thing. You don't want to mess it up, but the water's already hot. You can hear it kicking on. You hear the heating element getting heat. This is open and it's uh, free of blockages. <clears throat> and uh, that plate in there keeps the bags from blocking the overpressures, right? So that way, if it does happen, something crazy goes on here, you still have your overpressures to protect you. So that's what the plate's really doing is keeping the bags out of those. And uh, yeah, so I'll turn this camera back on once we get some steam going. All right, so just started doing this. It's been kind of making noise for a second. The water just started coming out. So this is what I consider steaming for five minutes. All right, and even, if, even at less than half, it's still got a lot in here. So I'm gonna take this towel, I'm gonna clean up this water. I wanna get the bottom wet, right? I don't want it to burn to this. And you can moisten your towel if you want. But we got all this that came out. And uh, if you're really worried about your towel burning, go ahead and moisten it. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there. Then I'm gonna do that for this five minutes. All right? And when this five minutes is up, that it's clearing out this water, it's steaming. I know the steam's really getting through there. Then I'm gonna shut it off. In the manual, it says to steam it for five minutes, bring it to 15, then aerate it and bring it all the way back up. We're not gonna do that. I believe that's overkill for what we're doing here. There are reasons to do that, but with these bags, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna just air this out for five over five minutes, and then we're gonna cook it for two and a half hours at the temperature, with the temperature being the most important thing for the sterilization here of this green spawn, I believe. But, um, you know, the factory recommended settings say, bring it up to 15, then vent it back again. And uh, there's conflicted results. Until I have issues, I'm probably not gonna do that. And uh, see the water's running out here. Because it is wearing out. All right? Boom. Oh. But, uh, and that's even, that's not even, that's, you know, an inch or so over the line. And it's, and it's still spraying out. So let that sink in. If you're having troubles with the blowing water everywhere, don't freak out. It's normal. And uh, 
Get you a towel. Clean it up. All right, now we're just going to flip that down. It's closed. Use the towel to do that. We'll leave it on 10 until it comes up pretty close to 15 in pressure. And then we'll turn it down three and a half here. And we'll let it set. So I'm sitting down here behind it at the computer. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on it. Not going anywhere. Just if you're wondering. We'll be back when it's time. And I'll show you me turning it down. And we'll watch it pop on and off for a second. All right, we're just over 15 pounds. I'm going to crank this back boy down, turn it off, turn it back to three and a half, which it should pop on exactly what we want, right at three and a half, and uh, now we'll set our timer. I'm going to let you watch. It should pop up to the, just into the green around 17, 18, turn off and go back down. So we're going to let this roll for a minute while I'm over here on the computer. Should see it pop off, see it pop back on right at 15, and boom, that's perfect. So, mess around with yours, see where it's set at, but this is where mine is coming factory settings. 
Um, turn this back on in two and a half hours from now. It is approximately two minutes till 1400 or two minutes till 2 p.m. here. So that'll be 1630 or 430 for us. I'll shut this baddie off, vent it, and uh, get those out of there. Unload it in front of the... Uh, I'll unload. I'll pull that right onto the box and unload them directly into the lab over here in front of the HEPA filter tent. Seal them instantly out of the out of the uh, insulator, and uh, that'll be a wrap for those. So see you in a bit. All right, so our time's up. Go ahead and flip the switch. Turn off our pressure cooker. It's been two and a half hours. Pressure sterilizer, pressure cooker. Got our handy dandy towel, still moistened from earlier use. We're going to use that here. Start letting our steam out. Right. Recommend wearing high pro, heat resistant gloves, all that good stuff if you need it. But we're going to go ahead and let that de steam go all the way down to zero. So it lets you watch that. So you know what to expect when you're getting there. See the water coming down the side. So we have another towel. That's why I have the other towel handy. Milk up there a little better. Also, why we unplugged everything and turned it off. You can smell that bird seed. I'll be looking to switch to 100% organic rye berries and source those, honestly. Or 100% millet, whatever I can get. The cheapest price on. The bird seed super cheap right now too. See the pressure going down. But yeah, I recommend having some old beach towels ready to soak all that moisture up. I always keep several on standby just because we're dealing with water. Between this and the um, refilling the humidifier. You see, I got this sitting on a stool. I actually made this in a carpentry course as I was exiting the military. I learned how to do the rise and run on some stairs and then uh, build this cool little thing. Brought home for the wife. Burned that with a blowtorch and shellacked it, whatnot, stained it. But I'm now using it for the stand for the All-American pressure cooker. Room is full of steam, and I was about to say the alarm going to go off. Quite a bit of steam. Probably because the first time running nine bags with it. I'm almost down to zero now. Go ahead and <clears throat> get the positive pressure tent on. Move the guitar out of the way. We were jamming on that a little bit ago. No jamming, I need making noise. Takes a while to get warmed up and get everything set up and going, but cooling it down and getting it out is pretty quick. Put the scale in the box. Alright, don't want to leave that on there, you know, longer than necessary. It is hot, but I uh, 
don't want to be burning too much on there. Scrub that off. Don't want to. It kind of leaves a little marker a little bit, so there's a little mark on there from the towel. It's really, really hot, but it stopped spitting out water now. So I'm gonna grab some some handles, some pot holders, and uh, get this ready. Get this going. handy old pot holders we'll use that and honestly I use the top of the fridge the metal fridge over here to put the lid on while I pull the uh, bin out the insulate insulator we'll pull the uh, pull that out with the nine bags and we'll set that on top of the box that this came in, which is what we're using now as a partial table, as you saw earlier, and uh, until I get the garage finished up, got the shed cleaned out while we were uh, cooking this. Worked on another video going over the, the plan, which I'll show you guys. Okay. All right, so I'll show you how I take it out. That's what I've been doing so far. It's working good, and uh, loosen everything up. Kind of one at a time, starting with the end away for me, just in case. Using these things here, this is wicked hot. You can wait for it to cool down and whatnot, but according to the owner's manual, it's going to be harder to take off if you let it cool. So, using that, so loosen her up. This and everything is all see I'm working on a camera here so the lid's gonna go to the left over here on the fridge the mini fridge which will eventually be the counter outside in the garage and uh, <clears throat> the pots gonna go to the right to the tent hold and twist this body off lift everything out get that fresh look nine bags Grabbing our wicked heavy pot, bringing it over here to the grill tent. Well, it's going to be hot, but leave that in here, cool down for a bit, and uh, that's that. <laughs> now we're going to put some gloves on, and uh. Seal those up. All right, we're back in the lab. Usually it's a much quicker process. I'm usually it's in. Not really worrying about the camera, but uh, put the mask on, sanitized, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and mop these out, get them sealed. Gotta make sure it's plugged in first. All right, back in the tent. These are still very hot. And the hand sprayed off. They're not, they have, they're not cooled down that much. Really, kind of just set it here. But I haven't had any issues with these tables. Get this sealed up. Make sure everything's on the right side. Got it on about four and a half on this lens field. Boom. Yeah, still pretty hot. Let's 
seal. Perfect. Beautiful. Soaked up that water nice. Wow, birds eat a good mix. So hot. Super hot though. Once again, these are those Amazon bags of fungus. Working pretty good. Got a hundred pack, no complaints. turned out. Got some fresh ink yesterday. Little bear, grizzly bear, claws. Seal, swing foot's crushing it. Couple seal that one real quick. Get a little fold over there. Just flip it over. It was like a double loop fold there, so I want to make sure it just gets a good seal. And high just because it had some water in there. I want that going in the bag. Should still be clean. Just a little precaution if you're wondering why I'm sealing it so low. like I'm sucking it down the outside edge. It's really been keeping it sealed to make me feel good about it when I take it out. Bottom bags in a weird little shape, but they look alright. Just curious about how they did with the extra bags in there. And I made sure to use the uh, liner in the bottom. If you're wondering, I like to miss the tent. I like the walls, Clorox, and uh, mostly alcohol.
I'm going to go through and double seal them all. just under where they were sealed. And this has a spring on it so you know when you start feeling that spring tension you're pushing too hard. And it's still warm. all this way so don't want to do a bunch of work and not double sew your bags you know don't mess up on you almost done almost done Get a moisture, moisture in there. Still hot, still pasteurizing. You know, the steam coming out of there is still killing everything. It's probably the most sterile anything will ever be, I would assume. The amount of heat and everything.
Double sealed all nine of these. I got triple sealed this one. Some extra moisture in some of these. As the steam is pushing out. All right. If you watched this far, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure to go ahead and watch my home HEPA filter build. And, uh, you know, check out the review on all the products and everything. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, ask questions. But this is how we're going to kick off the million dollar home mushroom farm side project. Much love, y'all. All right, got the gloves off, everything's sealed up. Make sure they're still pretty warm. I'm going to show you kind of the moisture content in some of these. Oh, they're wicked hot. Come over here on the fan still looking hot no way to see nice and swollen no standing moisture there's no water out of that it's with the mixture so you, and you can be you can be off by 30 40 50 grams or so you know i would just give yourself a little limit there but catch an eye for it and these are uh, all doing nice i'll show you some of them that are colonized right now so we'll come over here into one of the little chambers where i'm storing them look here's herisha americanum on the 25th same recipe it's got a little uh Little boom, so that's two days. Spot, uh, got some little rhizomorphs. King oyster, 25th to the 25th of May, 24. King oyster, same recipe. Got uh, mycelium coming here, mycelium here, mycelium here. Uh, you know, plus several more down here with the same thing. Just so y'all can see uh, that that's same recipe works. It's what I've been using 1000 grams to 600 grams of water with the wild bird seed Once I probably switch over to like pure organic um, Rye berries or millet that I can get here uh, I may move away from the bird seed just to try to get something super locally sourced and um, Yeah, we'll work with what we get okay. Put that on 1600 about three pounds so three pounds eight ounces and uh this will easily do six to eight bags of five six to eight five pound bags so you know okay with the bird seed right now it's 17 bucks it's like 16 dollars some change for the 40 pound bag that's like 40 something cents a pound and it's like 40 something cents a pound so that's super cheap super doable uh, we're going to see what we can get on some rye grain, some rye berries, so we can get for some organic options and more local delivery options instead of just sticking with Walmart. And uh, yeah, I thought that was super cool to share. Those are the Amazon Tongass bags, best price we could find there. And uh, they're a little thicker, I think, than the unicorn bags, but that's just my opinion. Uh, they seem a little less rigid, too, a little less terrible. Um, that's my experience thus far. I think that uh, these are working out pretty good. The, the, it's, uh, that all Americans working out pretty good. I just got done making this other video. I'm downloading for you guys uh, for the plan. And uh, yeah, so that three pounds can do like six or plus bags. And you gotta remember, we only put a thousand grams in there and it ends up weighing, you know, uh, 1600. You end up adding 600 grams of water. So you're adding weight there. You're getting a little better bang for your buck. And after you add that to all the bags, you're paying like 10, maybe 15 cents a bag with those right now. So looking at maybe 20 cents max per fruiting bag mixed with the substrate you're still under a dollar per fruiting block so uh thanks for watching much love y'all